Good morning and welcome. Look at this. We're going to do a beautiful stem with sunflowers, a cup of tea or coffee, whatever you want it to be, and maybe some letters that we got in the post and we're ready to settle down and just enjoy a smooth and quiet entry into the day or winding down for the end of the day. Let's get started. Good morning and welcome to Deliberately Creative. And if it's afternoon or evening where you are, I hope you had a great day. And uh, yeah, we're going to get started on this. It's morning for me. It's before noon. I am really excited. We have this really pretty sunflower stem with a cup that can be filled with whatever beverage you wish. Some letters because I didn't want to do another open book page without putting anything on it. So I'm thinking this is the back of some letters sitting there. You're either addressing them, getting ready to send them out to your friends or family. Maybe it's some birthdays coming up and you're taking care of those cards or it's some letters that were sent to you. Maybe you're one of those February birthdays that we had a whole passel of sitting in chat on Friday. So if you are celebrating a birthday this month, happy birthday. My husband's birthday is this month too. So yay. All right. If you want to draw or color along with me, if you want to color along, uh, this was drawn during the 14 hour marathon that we did on New Year's Eve on December 31st, 2020. And I created this lovely book. It's a downloadable, instant download from Teespring. And all of the artwork is in there. So there's the artwork for today. And this is the kitty cat that's going to be tomorrow. I know a lot of people are waiting for that cat. I am too. I'm excited about that. This is an instant download. You could, down, you could go and buy it, download it, print it off on any paper you want to work on. I like to print on the 140 pound uh, cold press watercolor paper because it's not too toothy. It's not too bumpy textured. And this was actually painted on a printout. It works just fine. And it looks just like the actual artwork. We are, however, painting on the actual artwork today. This was drawn. I'm going through all of this stuff here at the beginning, giving people a chance to get in. It was drawn using the Eco Pen. This is a uh, surprisingly waterproof ink. It's very black. It dries very quickly. Now, people are saying they're having a hard time finding it on Amazon right now because the sellers seem to be out of stock. Just keep checking. That's why whenever I buy it, I usually buy the 20 count tube of pens. So I have a stash waiting for me just in case. This is the 0.38 inch tip. So it's, um, it's a smaller size. It's not too big. It gives us a nice size to work with. All right, let's get started here. I'm going to move to the top down closer up camera. There we go. And now we can look at that reference picture right there. Boom, reference. So I'm looking at this reference and I'm thinking I'm not putting that uh, flowery background in. It was just too, too busy. We are going to make the whole background be that really dark wood. Just, just, you see how there's kind of that dark, dark wood color there. I do see kind of an orangey tone to it. I think I want it to be a little bit, um, I'm not sure. I think I want it to be kind of an orangey tone to the background. It's going to be darker. It's going to be uh, cozy and comforting. And when we put in the uh, cup and saucer, I will probably be adding a little bit of gouache to my paints. Let's make that smaller again. <laughs> I just realized, oh, you covered up the paint stuff. Let's just set that on that side for now. After the show, up in the iCard will be the playlist of all 30 of those pieces of art. Well, as the videos are finished, all 30 of them will be in that playlist. How about that? <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
and it's just being held down onto a piece of plastic corrugated plastic board so I can use it as my mixing surface and it's just being held down with drafters tape and this is a low tack um, masking tape that doesn't tear the paper so I think I've got all of the bits and pieces organized here we are going to get the background around this all wet around the flowers around I want the dramatic background so I hope that is in keeping with what you want to see I know that when I'm doing something that makes me happy you guys tend to be happy too and good morning and welcome Linda I see you came in welcome welcome I need to remember there's these little holes these little spaces that I put in to all of these different little nooks and crannies so I'm just getting the paper wet and I just realized I didn't hit the start on my phone so I'm gonna hit start I was busy last night editing little uh, short videos to go on to my Tangi. Tangi being that short form video site um, that runs through an app. So if you've got a phone or a tablet, you can go to the whatever app store you use and you can download Tangi and have some fun one minute or one to two minute videos depends on how many uh, followers a person has I I can put two minute videos but I decided that I like to stick around that one minute mark just just to keep it quick so on Tangi I do speed videos of all of, my, of many of my pieces of art that I do here on YouTube and if you're interested in that it's a lot of fun and we're building a nice community over there so you can download that it's also a place where you can share your um, direct directly with me on the little videos that I post you can actually click the try it button and you can post pictures of your artwork right there on Tangi so all right I'm using the uh, cheap paint <laughs> <laughs> this is that uh, 42 color watercolor set it's uh, the superior watercolor 42 colors it's a fan palette surprisingly it is um, the colors seem to be fairly light fast ish except for the purples and any color that uses the whatever it is in the purple uh, the purples tend to be a little bit fady but otherwise things seem to be pretty good Ah, uh, Tatiana, so you're you're having fun, you're learning. That's awesome. And people are out there in the world in the snow. So yeah, yeah, guys, be careful, stay warm, stay safe. I'm going to put this kind of burnt sienna color down first. So I'm just putting it right there on the edge of my plastic board. I think I got my my painting set up here in a good spot I want to make sure and get that nice and wet I want the background to be kind of dramatic but it doesn't have to be Whoa. keep keep out keep an eye out for those spots of water on your on your brush sometimes you want the water to drop all over the place and sometimes you don't the reason for wetting the background down is just so I can get kind of a smoother lay down of my color. And since I knew I was going to be working in and into that sort of fiddly zone around the around the petals, I wanted to have that a little bit wet so if I stop in in mid in mid stroke or something I have a little bit of extra room to play so this is just filling in the space I'm not going to get the wood really detailed up here it's mostly going to just get dark but I need that you know fitting down inside my petals nice thing about this paper is that it is um, 
paper that will lift, the paint will lift on the paper. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're going to get this background in. Wow, this paper is drying really fast. Yay. Hey, Brandy, welcome. Nice to see you. It's so fun to see people showing up from all, all the different platforms. I love, I love seeing people showing up here from, from everywhere. You know, we've got, we've got folks that watch me primarily on Tangi. We have folks that watch me primarily here on YouTube. I've got folks stopping in that just sort of keep an eye on what I'm doing over on Instagram. So I'm in all those places. I'm getting the paper wet again. It's drying really fast. And I don't even have any heat on in my office here, my studio. Uh, I've got the door open to the living room. And that is all the heat that I've got coming in. It's not very cold here. We are probably going to be in the low 50s today. So... I need to get more water in that space. There we go. I'm not worrying about the paint getting up in the petals of the flowers. There's going to be a lot of work going into those petals. There's going to be shadow. There's going to be, you know, shadow from the orange tone of the flowers, shadow from the browns that go into the flowers, surprisingly. The flowers are not just yellow. I'm just grabbing some more of that burnt sienna color and <laughs> uh, you know, I I have been I have been accused of being kind of a Pollyanna-ish person sometimes, which just means that yeah, I have a sunny disposition. I look for the positives in most things going on in my life. Sometimes it's hard. And sometimes I do have down days. Today's not one of them. Today I am in a great mood. Sunflowers and letters. I am working on a whole bunch of different projects. This weekend, I spent the whole weekend just doodling, drawing, and making coloring pages to go into a kid's coloring book for Easter springtime bunnies chickies those kinds of things and making I, I figured out how to make simple dot to dots with some of my artwork so yeah I'm I'm just having fun I'm working on a, a lot of projects for um, for my Kindle store on Amazon I do have a I do have several books I just realized, hey, Mark, sitting out there on the table beside where I sit, it's either on the um, actual side table or on the um, the little table next to the where my computer would sit, uh, is the pocketbook. I have a new reading log that, uh, journal that just came out, guys. And I'm really excited because it uses the artwork that I did in this series. It uses one of those as the cover. It Actually, it was the very first piece of art that I did for this series. So it's the cup with the... Yep, that one. You're going to have to push the door and make squeaks. Thank you. So... Uh, it's a pocketbook reading log. And look at that. I used the artwork that I did from this series. It was the very first piece of art. Right there. So I've got it published on a reading log. I've, okay, I, I'm really proud of this because I'm starting to do some of these little books. There we go. So this is the, the reading log, and it has these uh, this table of contents that's already got page numbers on it so that when you, you read a book on page one, you go to page one of the, of the reading log, and you can fill it out with the title and author 
and what type of book it was, and if it was an ebook, an audio book, a hardcover, or a paperback. And then it does have a light dot grid on here also, so you can, when you're writing, you've got a little bit of a target to be able to write your ideas and thoughts about it, your favorite quote, and your rating. Isn't that cool? So this is in my, um, this is on Amazon. So if you do a pocket, if you search for pocketbook reading log, it will come up. And uh, so yeah, I'm really excited. And I like how the artwork translated onto that cover. Isn't that cool? So yeah, I'm stepping into the low content um, books more. I do have my coloring book also, my the um, Cozy Designs is printed up and is on Amazon also. So if you do a search for 30 Cozy Creative Designs, this book will come up. So I'm picking up a little bit of Burnt Sienna and Burnt Umber together. Hey there, Daffy Kibble. Welcome. And Hossy John. Hossy. Yay. So I put a little bit of that um, Burnt Umber into my burnt sienna color so I can get some shadowy tone in here and I'm going to put a bit of a shadowy tone kind of underneath of the the flowers and the leaves the branch stem I guess it's a stem right this is a stem of flowers and these flowers in this picture are actually artificial flowers so that's a tip if you like to paint or draw flowers but you don't grow them very well and you don't like buying flowers that are uh, cut flowers because sometimes it takes longer to paint get get some of the those new stems of ornamental silk flowers from the from from the craft store Amazingly, they are very realistic looking now. I would get the ones from the craft store. You can take a look at the ones at the dollar store. Sometimes they've got really good things. And, you know, and then they're only a buck. Or the pound store, and, you know, then they're only a pound. Um, so... I'm just putting some darker tone in here. I don't know. This this is kind of a, a wood tone, but not really. It's I mean it's a wood tone, but I don't I don't know that I'm gonna put wood grain in here this time. I think that it's just going to be a color that's wood like. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I thought that it turned out really well. Um so you like the design of the pages? It's uh it's a little bit different than some of the ones that I've seen already. I wanted to make something um, usable, friendly, and small enough that it, you know, I'm doing my books. These are, you know, eight and a half by eight and a half tall by five and a half wide. So I'm doing my books so that they are, um, they're, they're small enough to fit in your backpack. There's room for 120 books. So this could last you for a little while. <laughs> oh, and at the back, I did leave a coloring page of the of the cover. A little advertising, you know. You gotta you gotta catch people when you've got them, right? So that's what I did. All right, I am just dropping some color in. Maybe this is like a leather kind of look of. Or that curled, that um, figured maple or curly maple or, you know, it's not, it's not the, um, it's not a mahogany. I'm not making it a super red color or that super burgundy red t tone that mahogany would get. But I'm just sort of working in some tones. I know that a lot of us, a lot of us read. You know, and I wanted to make sure that the book, um, that my reading log accounted for audiobooks because many of us are multitasking. We are listening to an audiobook while we're working, while we're, you know, cleaning house or doing the bills or 
just, you know, just chilling out. Problem for me, if I'm just chilling out and reading a book, uh, listening to an audio book, I can sometimes, if I've got a really good, um, a really good reader doing the book, I will sometimes get so relaxed that I will just drift off into um, a very peaceful zone that will lead me into that sort of meditative zone, which will lead me into that quiet place that I fall asleep. I've been told by a few people that they like to turn on these videos of me painting because they are very relaxing and they can fall as they they fall asleep really well listening to to me talking as I'm painting oh I'm enjoying that look the neat thing here is that because we've got sort of sections we can work through in sections and if the paint starts to dry outside of it as long as I get a section done we're good got a hair or something some see how I just picked that up boom picked up that little piece of hair that sort of fell down on my my space I am just saying that my deepest shadow is probably going to be right here underneath of the flowers the uh, letters and the cup and things like that are kind of shadowing this reference has the light coming from this direction from the right across to the left the honey color of the tea yeah it's a it's a nice color for that for that tea I'm I like and I like the shadow in that cup because it gives you it, it gives you that sense of depth so yeah. All right. Column and drawing, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's a nice it's it's a nice uh, reference. And what I want to say about the reference is go look on Unsplash and on Pixabay and Pexels, any of those sites that are made for artists to use the 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 artwork oh see how pretty that is yeah this is where my hand set down in the paint so I'm just going to soften that up a little bit maybe add a bit more water to it I want to darken this corner a little bit more and maybe right along that edge of the of the letter it's going into that dark zone See, I'm setting my hand down. I have to be careful. I need to be careful. But this, this background's going in pretty well. I see that I need to get... Ah, so this is green leaf. This is green leaf. This little corner right here, that's turned up green leaf edge. So, yeah. I want to get this wet and I picked up some pigment to get it wet so that way if I was lifting some colors I was going to be depositing some colors so like right here you see how it's lifting I can go and drop some more color back into it and yeah I do have my my palette and my palettes on my left my water is above me here so I could be dropping paint sometimes that happens it's it's all a matter of making it so you guys can see things here on on the video more than convenience for me I'm sort of tapping in I want to get a little bit of texture down here and then I'm sort of moving my brush around because this paper oh the paper it's the uh, 265 grams GSM grams per meter um, and it is bamboo mixed media paper by Hannah Mullah a little bit darker right there 
a little bit darker right here. But you see, I'm not putting a solid dark color. I'm letting it be I'm letting it be um, very free, free form with the colors. I'm not putting super, super dark everywhere. And when it dries, I might have to go back in and add more dark color. I'm putting a little bit of dark right up here in the very corner. I'm going to leave it light on this side here because I'm saying the sunlight's coming across. There's probably a window right there. Somebody's sitting at their table. It's by the window. It's a sunny day. It's a sunny day out there. It's not a sunny day here. It's a cloudy, rainy day here. But a little bit more dark right there. I'm just picking up some of that burnt umber color. <laughs> so I am looking at doing some food journals, some food logs, because I know a lot of us are trying to keep track of what we're eating. Even if we're not doing a complete diety diet, sometimes having a place where we can keep, keep track of what we're eating just helps us to be a little more mindful of what we eat. I'm not, I'm, well, actually I do have a membership right now on Weight Watchers. I've been, I took kind of six weeks off for the holidays and January, <laughs> but I'm recommitting, I'm recommitting to doing my, my journaling, keeping track of making sure that I drink enough water because really I have found if I can get up and remember to move around and drink my water, I don't end up munching so much. And if I have something that keeps my hands busy, so I do like to knit. I do like to, well, obviously I like to paint and you can't knit and munch very easily. You can't crochet and munch on things very easily either. Ah, see, I just laid my arm in the paint again. Just one of those things. I'm going to zoom up, whoops, and in. And come back down just a little bit. Down, 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 down. Just filling that, that top part right there. Putting a little bit more shadow down in. You want to get the shadows in so then you don't feel like you're going to mess up your flowers getting your shadows in around the edges. At least for me, that's that, that makes it easier for me. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you have to, you know, being, being that I am doing my artwork as my job, it, it's, it's my profession now. I am a professional artist and low content book publisher and, um, affiliate marketer. And, <laughs> you know, you have a whole bunch of little uh, pies that you, you put your, you don't put your eggs all in one basket, as they say. So I'm trying to diversify where my uh, income is coming from. But all my low content book stuff, it's all things that are creative that I am, I am making. Um, I'm doing the artwork for, I'm doing layout. I love, I love doing stuff like that. But wouldn't this be a pretty cover to a food journal? This would be a lovely co cover to a food journal. Ooh. Hmm. You know, I could use gouache to take out those lines and make it into just a 
just plain sheets of paper. And then that could be where I put the, the little title box. Ooh, that's, that's kind of fun. <laughs> Animal Art by Terracotta. Welcome. Thank you. You know, the colors are fun. I am going to wash my brush off. I love these warmer tones. I am... I'm actually... See how this is just getting... Uh, I was just sort of pushing some color around. I think I need to dry this. Get that worked into the points. Make sure I've got my... As far up close to my my piece as I want. I think maybe a little bit darker. See, and that's what you do is you look at it and you go, well, where do I need to push it a little bit darker? A little bit darker right here under the petals. And this is just the, what I'm calling the burnt umber color on here. It's a little bit cool, but it's still a brown. It's so funny. Mark, every once in a while, he goes walking past. And because we live in a very old house, I can hear him walking. And I don't know if he's going to stop at my door to ask a question. Hey, Johannes. Welcome. <laughs> Amy. The, it would be an awesome cover for a garden log also. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, garden log. That would be a great cover for a, for a garden log. Whoops, that was not what I intended. I thought I had cleaned the brush out. So what happens when I put paint down in a spot that I did not intend? You just wipe it down. Especially when the paint is wet, you can just go in and wipe it off. It's not going to be too dark and in my in my um, in my way so anyway burnt umber just getting some really dark spots right up underneath I'm gonna rotate this so that I don't put my hand in the paint move your painting that's I have to re remind myself move the painting don't twist my arm into a position that's hard hard to deal with just move the painting A little bit darker. This brush is the, it is the round number 12 Mimic. So it's an, it's a synthetic squirrel brush and it's by Creative Mark Artist Products. And that is a brand that's made by Jerry's Artorama. So if you go on to Jerry's, you can find it. You can also find it on my Amazon affiliate store in, under my art supplies. If you are looking for ways to support artists, going, I don't have an affiliate with Jerry's themselves, but I do on my Amazon store have my affiliate. So I do earn a small commission if you make a purchase on the Amazon store. Um, or anytime you click on my link to go to Amazon, I get a small commission. And it does help. It really, really does help. You know, say you're going on to Amazon to do your, you're, you're using the Amazon Fresh or something like that to get your, your staples, your supplies for the week, your food. Um, if you go on, go through my, my link to go start your shopping on Amazon, that helps and it doesn't cost you anything extra that way so I tend to shop through people's affiliates also especially if I want to support them all right I'm just gonna drop a little bit of water right along the edge of that darker spot just so it blurs out there we go Just, just having fun here. I'm going to dry this now, I think. Maybe I will 
make a little bit more texture right here. See, I say I'm going to dry it and then, ha! Huh. But I know I do have some people who are painting along with me, so welcome to my friends who are painting along. Remember, if you are doing this, af if you're painting along with my videos afterwards, you can always hit the pause button. I'm just using that same color that's in my brush. I just want a little bit of texture down in there. When it dries, it's not going to be as pronounced. And yeah, I do. I want a little bit of texture right here. Uh, Lindsay is amazing. I love Lindsay the Frugal Crafter. I'm kind of brightening this area up a little bit by just pushing some of that paint around. I have learned so much watching uh, Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter. There's so many really good watercolorists out there, and I am just a beginner. What this is doing is it's pushing that paint around a little bit and giving me almost the effect that you get like if you took um, saran wrap or... I'm not going to push the paper towel onto it because I don't want to lift that much paint, but almost like you would get if you were tapping it to lift a little bit of the paint off. But I'm, I'm kind of lifting and moving, so it's kind of puddling in different areas just a bit. I like that. I wanted a little bit more light here so that it feels a little more dark. And I'm going to just along the edge of that dark paint. I don't want a real hard edge, so I'm kind of working it out just a little bit. All right, good enough, good enough. I could sit there and putz with that all day long. It's just so much fun. All right, so we're gonna go like this. I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see it, the whole thing. So that's where we are right now. We are, background is pretty much done. I'm going to dry really well. This is just a heat tool like you would use for embossing uh, if you were a rubber stamper. But you can also do this with a blow dryer or you could have a just one of those little one of those little fans. Yeah, it does look like burl wood, doesn't it? Years ago, I was doing a lot of woodworking back in the late 80s, early 90s, I was doing a lot of woodworking and I was making instruments like um, mountain dulcimers and little uh, five string lyre harps. And I even made a few of the um, like 21 or 22 string Celtic harps. They were crude, they were, you know, homemade looking pretty much. I mean, they, I'm not crude. I guess they were, they were not of the, you know, fine instrument range. They were, I still have one of my, one of my dulcimers and it's great. I love it. I carve the, the, the headstock. So it has a little bit of a chunky, uh, chunky scroll on it, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. The, um, using the, the plastic wrap and the tin foil and the scrubby sponges. Jay Lee does all kinds of things. I am now going to, I'm not gonna worry about taking all of that brown out of my stem. We're gonna start working the green in because that's sort of my, right here, that's my next layer back is the green. But I am going to soften that brown that's in there. Now that the background is dry, I can go like this, get, I'm just moving the color that was inside here around. It's sort of toning the paper a little bit. This is going to be green, but that brown that's there will just work into the shadows. And I'm going to work right over the stem. Not a problem. You could do this all as a, as a tonal study where you do it all, 
with one color or two colors, but I'm going to put some green in here. Watching on TV, this is going to be cool. Yeah, Gail, I love watching art shows on TV. So the green, I am looking at that green going, there's a lot of yellow in that green underneath. So I think, let's zoom out just a smidge so we can see a bit of the corner of the palette. I'm going to take the yellow ochre color to start working that in. This is going to be a very warm painting. It's, it's definitely going to be a warm painting. But I'm going to be taking that to the green, but I'm going to use that yellow ochre as kind of my highlight on the stems. I'm not going to use it as highlight on the, on the flowers, but these little bits right here, these aren't the flower petals. These are actually that green cap that's underneath. You're not seeing a lot of that under here, but there's a bit of a highlight hitting this side of the flower on those green bits. So I'm going to put some yellow in that. Yellow ochre. Ah, yes. Eco pen. Okay. Um, let me get my green in here and then we will, we will do a little how to get your eco pens flowing again, because at first I thought, oh my gosh, these are, these pens are terrible because they would, they would, you know, stop flowing. And it's a matter of having some semi rough paper around or and having a hard surface. So right now I'm taking kind of this olivey green color. It's, or it's kind of a, a natural looking sop, sap green and I'm dropping it in and I'm leaving some of the area where I did my white, my light color. Oh, that was a, that was a yellow petal, but it just turned green. That's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to say I'm putting a little bit of that green down the stem. Now also the stem is going to get much darker, but for now, I'm just going to work this in. So I have an idea of where my green, I do like to layer colors. Yes. So I do like to layer color. I do like to. I'm not a realism painting person. I don't do, you know, botanical realism, but this is a botanical style because it's a, it's a plant. <laughs> so let me get just sort of a layer of that color in. We're getting that all. Sort of laid down. Now I'm taking a bit of darker green. And when I want to darken up that green even more, I will be grabbing some of the Prussian blue to darken it. I know that right along that edge there is going to be darker. Let's go ahead and put it in the top down ver version again. Back here is going to be darker. Back there will be darker. The back side of that stem will be darker. This paper does buckle. The the it's mixed media paper, so yeah, it does buckle. And now I'm picking up some of that Prussian blue and see how just because I didn't clean my brush, I had that green in there. That Prussian blue is making that really dark, dark green. My paper is really wet. So my, my uh, colors are going to bleed. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm not, um, I'm not too worried about making my final decisions on things. You know how, 
If you've been around for a little while, you'll know that I kind of do this. I sort of work around a painting. If I've got a color on my brush, And so up here, it is a little bit drier. So I'm putting more defined lines, but they are hitting wet paint also. So they do blur. And I want a bit darker right there. See, this is all going to blur out. This is super, super wet. And that's making me really happy that it's doing that because it feels a little more natural. Right down in here is going to be really dark. And because we don't, we're not putting all that other flowery stuff in the background, I am, you know, having to make some things up here. There we go. Just... Just make it up as you're going along. Hello, Anne and Milika. Welcome. Why don't I use watercolor paper? Oh, I do. Um, I'm just using the, uh, I, I drew on these with my pen and I had a stack of a, a tablet that came from Hannah Mula and I wanted to try it out and see how it works. And it is amazing. You know, it might buckle when it's when it's painted, but look, it's pretty darn flat now. And it's so nice to draw on it, and the colors just lift so well. We're gonna set this over to the side just a touch, and I'm make sure rinse my brush. We're gonna grab. I'm just gonna grab a piece of that paper, and let's see. Do I have? one of these pens that, ah, yeah. Okay. So my pen is not working. Oh no. What am I going to do? This pen is one of my favorite pens. And first thing you do when you, when you draw it across, you look to see, do I have ink in here? If you have ink, this is still a good pen, even though look at that. It's not, ah, okay. It's kind of coming out now. What you do tap, and draw across. So I'm going to go to the side view so you can see it. I am tapping down and letting it pull across. So now let's see. Nope, it's not going yet. You know that the ink is there. It's coming down. The ball gets a little gummy. I, you know, that's, these are cheap pens, guys. These are like 50 cents a piece or 60 cents a piece. So it's worth, oh, look at that. Now I've got ink flowing again. And then if you keep track of the little teeny, teeny, tiny cap, look at that little cap. Keep track of the little cap and put the little cap back on. It helps to keep the tip from drying out. And all of the pens come with the little cap. And it they... Um, so I tend to keep them, I drop them into a little container. I don't see my little container. Um, and I also have an edge on my desk where things will drop. Let's just, so, so I'm just going to show you right here. This is like an edge. And so a lot of times I'll just drop it down like that when I'm, <laughs> when I'm doing my drawing. So you can. See, sometimes it'll get started and then it will stop. So it's because I hadn't been drawing very much with it. But now it's all primed and ready to go. It's kind of like priming a pump where you have to pour a little extra water into the pump to get it started. Sometimes you have to pump really hard to get it started. But this is one of the best pens for drawing and painting because all of this was drawn with this pen. All right. I think that is helpful. Oh, click that like button, guys. If you are enjoying this, I'd love to see those likes. It helps YouTube 
to um, to see that this is something people want to uh, watch and share. So watch the videos, share the videos. I'm going to go ahead and dry this so I can start putting a bit more detail in. Cool thing about the bamboo paper is that even though I have these really hard lines up here, I can go back in with just a damp brush and soften those lines up. Chicken soup and crackers. Tummy jacket. Oh yeah. Actually, my, my, my comfort food is hot tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. Or hot tomato soup and crackers. When I was little, the only way I would eat um, cream of tomato soup was with probably half a pack of crackers crunched up in it. <laughs> now I absolutely love tomato soup. Hey, thank you. I'm so glad that reminding is not annoying. <laughs> I'm going to go back in with my slightly damp brush and make sure I don't have a puddle of water coming off of it. And look at this, guys. Just because your paper towel gets dirty doesn't mean you have to throw it away immediately. This paper towel has been through about three paintings now, I think. So I try to be, um, oops, sorry. I try to be uh, cognizant of what, what I'm using and what I'm throwing, throwing away. So far, your three pens are a no-go after trying. Oh, keep going. Keep trying. Um, if you've got a piece of cardboard, uh, like the back of a tablet, take it to that. And I mean really, really go at it. Really hit down and, and go across, striking with the tip. Um, almost like you were trying to strike a match. Almost like you're trying to strike a match. When you're getting those, trying to get those pens going... Um, I thought I had some that were totally, you know, totally duds, totally failures, and they weren't. I got them started running again. So, you know, give them a try again. Give them a try again. I am softening that up by having that yellow ochre color down underneath first. Look at that. I am going to darken even more underneath of this area right here on the on the stem so I'm taking that green that green that is kind of yellowy and a touch of the Prussian blue what I call Prussian blue I don't know it's a C30 let's see this is one, two, three, four. So it's one, two, three, four. So C37 on this palette. I don't know, but it's the one that makes me think of Prussian blue. So it makes a really pretty green. Let's zoom in. Were they goldfish crackers? Uh, actually, they were probably the oyster crackers because when I was little, goldfish crackers weren't the thing yet. What we would toss into our soups tended to be the um, those little hexagonal um, oyster crackers. I don't know why they were called oyster crackers. When I was little, when my dad would call them oyster crackers, I, I would tell him, no, I didn't want them. And then he would uh, just tell me he put some crackers in my soup. And then... And then there they were, and they were these yummy little salty bits of crunchy air. <laughs> so that really pretty dark color. I'm going to make that darker out here. Oh, I can't wait for spring to get here. And, well, actually, I mean, I'm not going to wish away any time. I, I don't like to wish away time. But I've got the birds um, on the front porch right now, right outside my studio. And because I rearrange things, I'll be able to open my window and have the lovely little bird song coming through when I'm working. See? 
look at that 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 slightly darker going into that area that I got wet aren't those leaves now starting to feel much more dimensional push your contrast don't be afraid to go really dark you can with watercolor you can soften your dark areas up some you can I know a lot of people are like oh once you put a dark color down you're dead you it, it's done you can't go any farther No, you can go in and lift out color <laughs> I'm taking my really dark 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 green right up underneath and I'm going to start getting some of that built in right here let's zoom in zoom in even closer so just as a heads up I only see about a third of the chat as it's going by so if you have a question put it in all caps and I have some very friendly people here who might even be able to answer the question for you so just if somebody answers and it's not me most likely they're if they feel comfortable answering they're probably more knowledgeable than I am um, <laughs> just just saying a little bit of that you know I'm just working my color now down around that stem and the cool thing with paint it's almost like sculpting it's almost like you're doing a three-dimensional object well you are doing something that's three-dimensional you're just making whoops get down here sorry about that see that's the problem when I'm working on something so big and tall so now that part right there is going to have to be much darker than that one but this little bit right here needs to be darker than the main leaf that's part of the sculpting that's part of the this part right here needs to be much darker because it's really being blocked by that leaf really being blocked by that leaf right there and then coming down then the stem is blocking this back edge and the underside of that is going to be really dark too so as I'm working my way down that back edge I'm going to come down here and make this bit really dark it's that broken broken cut end of the stem so then I am going to tuck just a little bit of dark right there because this is coming up into the leaf we are getting some shadows here and there actually that shadow goes to the back side think about where the lights coming from where is the light going and this is what I was talking about lifting getting that wet I'm gonna get this little bit right here wet and lift up I'm letting that get because it's a little bit damp now I can bring some color back into it so it doesn't have a harsh line all right Amy be careful be good have a have a safe safe journey to your lay down spot there we go see we're sculpting it in we're going ooh that's gonna be shadowy there but maybe a little touch of some lighter spot right there I love doing this kind of thing so it's the push and pull of the painting see how this right here I might even have that top edge of that flipped over bit that's going to be darker than the main leaf but it's lighter 
than the, the shadow behind it. Little things. We're, I hope that you guys are enjoying just working your way through the sunflower. Just growing it on the paper as you go. I try to not zoom through. I like to think about what I'm doing. Why is the light hitting that way? What can I do to give that feeling of there's texture? Not having it be too, too flat. So this right here, I want to work a little bit of some texture in. So I'm taking the paper is damp because I just, you know, washed out that, that color in there. The paper is damp. I'm giving it a little bit of texture to make it feel kind of like the leaf has some little bumps and lumps in it. Little bumps and lumps. This is fabric. This is, um, because this is an artificial flower, this is fabric. So, you know, we can, we have a little bit of license with this. A little bit darker right there underneath of that leaf. Maybe just a bit more, maybe just the Prussian blue. Ooh, by taking that Prussian blue right on top of all that green paint, it just makes it go really, really dark, but it's not black. It's actually a super deep green. I'm gonna say that back edge right there. And I'm gonna put a little bit of that darker color right underneath of the reference picture. I'm gonna put a little bit of that darker color right there. There we go. And then I will soften it out. Lifting brings out the 3D quality. Absolutely. And that's part of that, what I was saying, that sort of sculpting feeling that, that I'm, I get from this. I really get that sculpting feeling when I use the uh, gouache. Gouache is something, it almost feels like you're carving. My dad... Um, my dad has gone through many different types of art in my growing up, my life. And so I, I learned about wood carving. I learned about jewelry smithing. He even has, you know, several books on how to wood carve that were published by an actual publisher. So he's got, he has books on, you know, how to carve um, tropical fish, how to carve uh, sea mammals, how to carve, you know, all those different kinds of how to carve books with wood carving. So I see that that is too bright right there. Too bright right there. That would be behind this bit of stem. This bit of stem here is up higher. So this little spot right there would be much darker. That bit of leaf behind the stem is actually going to be darker. Up here under the flower is going to be much darker. I'm going to say I can see a little spot of the greenery under the flower right there. Just a touch, just a touch. And so now looking at that reference, the center is going to be much darker, but it's going to blur out. I need my green back. The cool thing about this palette, being able to flip these around and get the colors that I want right near where I'm working, I really, I, I enjoy that with this, with this palette. There we go. 
That's not quite dark enough. A little bit more of the dark blue. Ooh, there we go. So I'm looking at that now and I'm going, all right, this side of this is going to be much darker. I'm going to blur it out. I will just because that underside there, well, maybe that's just going to there. See, you know, just putting some of those lines in, I'm going to be softening them out. I do like details, guys. I try not to go too over overboard. I try. So first off, you go, ooh, that's kind of scary. But then take a little water. And on one side of that line, one side of that line, start to soften. I'm going to say one side of the, that line is going to be on the top side. See how we're starting to work that in. We're starting to get one side of the line. That gives you a hard line and a soft line. A hard line and a soft line tends to give you more of a feeling of the variation. And then you can go and soften the transition between them. I'm going to put just a little bit more dark right here along this edge just because it's under the edge of the plate. And a lot of this comes from just playing with your colors and let them just I want to go back so that you can see. And so I can, I need to see it too from a bit more of a distance like this. Oh, those big, um, the, the big like shelf mushroom things. They're that really hard fungus. My, my dad would call those tree ivory. And those were really cool. Um, people would use it and do almost like scrimshaw type carving onto them. And then uh, they would discolor. Is that what you're talking about? Th those types of type of thing, Uncle Dan? See, look at that just a few a few touches of some color i'm seeing that it's too light right there part of zooming it out or stepping away or taking a picture of your artwork and stepping away from it look at that and then right down here this is too bright make that darker it's in behind that leaf Ah, see, see, yep. All right. Yeah. Um, a conch could be also, you know, th people call things different things. So, uh, you know, conchs are shells, but conchs, um, or could be the sound that happens when you fall and hit your head, <laughs> right? So different, different things 
can sound the same, means something totally different. All right. I like that. I like that a lot. I see that it needs to be a lot darker right up underneath of the flower. See, that's the reason why I'm zoomed out. Um, this is helping me right up under here. I see that it needs to be darker and kind of coming to the back like that. Oh, there it is. There it is. That bit right there can be a lot darker. And coming down the center here, it's really wet right here right now. And I'm kind of letting it stay really wet. I'm not drying it on purpose. I'm, I'm letting it. So what's happening here? Come on, zoom. Ah, my, my zoomy zoom. Sometimes I have to pick it up and aim it better. So there. Now you can see what I'm looking at. I'm going, okay, that little spot right there. I, I know this is being fiddly. I'm being fiddly now. I need to stop being so fiddly, but sometimes it's fun. Right behind that stem. A little bit darker. And right behind that stem, a little bit darker. Where there's a dark, you need to have light. So something here, see how this is shining? Just a little bit of light. I, in the drawing, there's little hairs sticking out. I don't have to put any texture now. <laughs> That's good. I like that. I think I need to dry this now. And we're going to put in just a soft wash of color. I think these are going to be maybe a, uh, mm, what color of envelopes? Maybe a soft blue, kind of like uh, airmail envelopes used to be a kind of a light blue color. <laughs> That's right, Brandy, <laughs> just like conking your head. <laughs> So there we go. We are going to put in the envelopes and the cup with that lovely honey gold color tea and then the flower petals. And we will just take our time and have fun doing it. <laughs> just drying those leaves off. Now, what happens with this paper is it does get all cockled. That's another one. That's cockles are a type of um, shell. But cockling is also that that bumping that happens on your paper. So you can use a spray bottle, spray the back side of your paper with a light mist, and then put it underneath of a couple books and let it dry. The saucer is, is kind of a pretty gray blue. I was wondering if just the tiny hint of blue color or just a gray on the envelopes. They could just be gray envelopes just ever so slightly gray, not. So what I need to do is clean off my, clean off my blue a little bit. Just a couple brush, brush loads. And now I'm just going to take that soft. Ooh, there we go. Just a pretty blue. This is that Prussian blue. And what I did is I just watered it down a ton. I have a lot of water in my brush. I am going to zoom in so we can really see what I'm doing and focus yeah I think the um, sort of a uh, ever so slightly green blue not not a true teal it's a blue gray a little bit darker blue gray on that the le the envelopes are basically just going to be a gray envelope or white. The, the shading inside the cup. Yeah. Isn't that going to be fun? I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm looking here at just putting a bit of, just a bit of color. in a couple spots on those envelopes. I'm 
little bit of a shadow here. Not too much. I mean, it's laying down. Remember that I changed it from being book pages to an envelope or two. Those letters sitting there waiting to be sent or cards waiting to be mailed. The artwork that you want to send to a friend. I'm just going to put a little bit of just a few little spots here. It's kind of like the, the paper is text, not textured, but it's got a few little lumps. Maybe it was really filled. Somebody really, you know, they, they got their full, full value for their, for their money for mailing that. I'm going to take that color that's along the edge and I'm just pulling it in under the edge of that. I'm using the same color that I've, I've been using all the way along. This one under here might be a little bit darker, a little bit heavier with that pigment, but not, I don't want to take straight pigment onto the paper. I love this kind of watercolor, um, the soft watercolor shading just there's something about it there was or there still is an artist um, who made cards for lots of different companies and calendars and and things like that um, Susan Branch and I used to get her calendars e almost every year for several years in a row she would have garden a very garden inspired lots of little birds and flowers and her artwork was very much the impression type watercolor with a little bit of extra cute just just to toss in I'm taking a little bit stronger of the pigment because I want to make this back edge here and the edge that's sort of underneath the saucer just a little bit more pr pronounced. Doing it like this, putting in your first layer of shadow, letting it sort of bleed out, putting in your next layer of shadow, let it bleed out, and then getting your, your darkest, your darkest color in there. The paper of the paper of the envelopes are cockled. Yes. Three or four colors that I have to replace more often. Uh, the my number one color that I would replace most often would be my my Prussian blue. That is probably my most favorite color for Prussian Blue and Payne's Gray. Because you can use those two colors for all of your shadows, going into your shadows. Um, yellow Ochre and the, um, the pink, the magenta pink type color. Oh, sorry about that. Just realized that I had my autofocus turned on. But see how the envelope is coming in now? That shadow is darker right in underneath. Just getting layers and layers. I love this brush, even though it's huge. I mean, this is a number 12 and... And this is a number two. Okay. So. Number 12, number two. I could be going in with the number two and making these itsy bitsy shadows, but 
I need to remember I dropped my brush on the floor. A uh, little brush. Um, but, see, I can get right in there with this brush. This big, this big, big brush. Right like that. And I can get right in up on the very toe of the brush and get those teensy teensy tiny details little things that you you know things that can speed up your artwork just a little bit not having to keep switching brushes that's one way to speed up your artwork Oh, isn't that looking pretty, though? Wow. I'm loving this. <laughs> yeah, all right. So let's go and... So, truthfully, the color in the um, that side camera is a little bit brighter than the natural color. The... Um, I think that the color from the top down is actually a bit closer to the natural tone. All right, we're going to get that color in on the on the the cup and saucer. And before I do that, I need to dry the edge because I'm going to take this into a slightly greener blue like a very pale, almost a pastel turquoise. Hey there, Dwayne and Phyllis. Wow. Your copy of the 30 Cozy and Creative Designs just arrived? Ah. Uh, what do you think? Oh, hey guys, if you happen to buy any of my books on Amazon, if you, uh, whatever your feelings are about the book, remember that I don't have any control over the quality of the paper. But if you could leave a comment about the artwork in the books, that would be awesome. I would love to hear what you think about the, the quality of the content and the layout and design um, by leaving a review on Amazon because Amazon will push the books out more if people are reviewing them. Yeah, the, the plate just lifted already from that background. Now, by having that light, that darker color there, it's going to make it easier to keep this edge lighter. So it's going to be light here and dark there, right? We're going to have the darker shadow right here. It's going to have light hitting this edge. And there's going to be a bit of a shadow right down here. So I'm looking at this. You know what? I'm looking at this going, I'm going to pull the tape so that I can work my plate all the way off the edge now. I like that. Ah, Gina's here. Woohoo! <laughs> so Phyllis, I hope that you're in lit's looking good. Oh, good. Good, good, good. <laughs> I am going to go like this and just lightly with my brush see how I've got paint coming in around the edge it's not really going to be a problem but I can get my brush slightly damp make sure I don't have any color in it and then I can wiggle that brush right around that edge and dab See how I'm getting that brown out of there? So now this is brown right here. I'm going to soften that edge. When I'm softening the edge like this, I'm staying to the inside of my plate. And you see how I just cleaned up that edge? It's not, like I said, it's not that big of a deal. These were not too far over. But I know some people, they want to... They want to have a nice, super harsh, hard, clean edge. Ah, thank you, Gina. So happy that you're here. 
So remember guys, click that like button if you enjoy this. I know we have people coming in and out. And the like button just helps. One, it, okay, the okay guys. Let's just be real here for a second. The like button is for me. <laughs> I say that it helps YouTube find my artwork and my videos and share them, and it does. But really and truly, the like button helps me know that you guys like what I'm doing. Sometimes um, as artists, we need a little bit of a uh, pat on the back. And that's what that like button is. It's the pat on the back. <laughs> I am that five-year-old that will run around with my artwork and say, look what I did, guys. Look, look, look what I did. So, um, yeah, thank you for those likes. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Okay. Oh, this is another piece of artwork that you can own. <laughs> I'm wearing my, my doodle, my doodle owl t-shirt. This is my, my little logo for my channel. And uh, if you want to buy merch, it's um, on that merch tray down below my video and it's on the Teastrings shop. So yeah, <laughs> fun thing. Hey, Birdie M. How'd your exam go? <laughs> I'm going to go back. <laughs> you don't need to see my face. We need to see this guy up close. I am going to actually clean up a spot on my palette right here. Wow, that's almost the color I want. That kind of gray blue. I'm going to grab a little bit more of a blue into it. So let's see. Kind of the... Ooh, yeah. That's, that's like almost exactly the color. So this color right here is a mixture of that sort of um, sap green color and the Prussian blue and a little bit of some phthalo blue that was all just sort of mixed up here on my palette. So we're going to go in and start getting that color on the, on the plate and on the cup. So I'm going to give it just a quick wash of that color going around. Now the handle of the cup is light. This cup is basically, it looks like it's a white cup. So I wanna try and maintain that light color. This is my base color of my plate though. I'm gonna say that the whole plate is this light color and then we will go in and work our shadows. And by putting a layer of a wet paint on here. <laughs> Aw. Thank you. I, I, you know, there's only a few people in my life that have ever really called me beautiful. I'm, I will say, okay, there's, there's a cute factor. I have the chubby cheeks. I've always had chubby cheeks. Even when I weighed like a hundred and, you know, in the low hundreds for weight, I'm, you know, I, I've always had the chubby cheeks and I've always looked younger than I am, which is kind of fun. So I'm going to say a little bit darker. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of the Prussian blue and the phthalo blue and that green. I just want to get a little bit heavier pigment. So Prussian blue, phthalo blue. And that sort of sap green color. That's making a real pretty color. And then we are going to go and say we're darker. Back side of the cup, right? Cup is blocking. But I'm not going to go all the way up onto the very, 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 very edge. I'm going to keep that with a little touch of just a sliver of the light, that light blue color right there. And I'm just going to work this down. I'm looking at the reference. That's why we have references. It helps us 
to see what we're looking at. I see there's like a little bit of a reflected shadow coming up along here. I'm going to soften these out, so don't worry. I see that there's a bit of a shadow, probably something else sitting on the table. Right here. There's a bit of a shadow on the inside of that edge. I'm going to, to take some water here in just a second. I'm going to pull that shadow along. I'm sort of lightly dry brushing that shadow on as the color continues to get used in my brush. Now I'm wetting my brush down. I'm taking out a lot of the water. I don't want it to be too harsh with the water. I, and I want to soften my edge of my shadow and work into those little reflected shadows. I don't want them to be little stripes. Now Prussian blue doesn't seem to stain as bad, but the phthalo blue does stain a little bit more. So when you put your colors down, you may not be able to lift them completely if you have a Prussian and a phthalo mixed together. Softening, softening. Leaving that little little edge of a light. Oh, I'm enjoying that. Softening up that, that shadow up here. And that color that's coming across. Some of it might be a little texture on the plate itself that I'm seeing. There we go. Isn't that a pretty blue color? Let's let's zoom out on that so we can see it in, you know. So looking at that, this shadow right here actually needs to be softened up and it needs to work out at more of an angle. So I'm just going to soften this up. I'm going to get the whole shadow wet. So I can work it around and not end up with that cauliflower or blooming that happens when you get it just a edge of something wet. So I don't want to pull that one down so far. So there. Ah, look at that. Softening up that shadow does help the edge of my edge of my shadow feel a little bit more real. I'm looking at that, the darkening of that color needs to be a little bit more Prussian blue now. Just to darken up that shadow right here under the, the handle of the cup and closer to the cup. And because the paper is wet, it's blooming out in the wet area. This is all watercolor. I thought I was going to use gouache on here, but I have not used any gouache yet. I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I need to. So, and then this shadow over here, I see that. I'm not pushing the brush down hard and I'm working on the brush kind of side to side. Let's see if we can see that a little better. Right here, see how I'm kind of really, I'm not up on the tip. I'm working sort of on the side of the brush. Blend those colors out. I like that. You haven't seen gouache on yet? Yeah, yeah. Nope, I haven't put any gouache on here yet. I don't know that I'm going to. I love that you guys like to hang out with me as I'm painting these long paintings. <laughs> and I know you think, oh, wow, it's a very simple drawing. There shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that hard or that long to do, right? And you can make your artwork as detailed or as um, simple 
as you want. So let's let's uh, go back to the main camera. Just for the folks who have come in recently and haven't seen, what we did is I started. Okay, so right there is the reference. This is where we are right now. We're coming up on getting ready to do the, um, it could be a broth or tea in the cup right there. And then this is where we started. So we started with this very, very simple looking flower with a cup and envelopes, right? Look at that. I am really tickled with how that's going. So what have you seen that was, um, you've heard it's even better than paper towels. Piece of cotton cloth, old t-shirt. Yep, cotton cloth t-shirt works really well too. I just happen to, you know, convenience, <laughs> I think is what it is. This is just convenience. Uh, but I use the same piece of paper towel for a long time. And, um, you know, this was like two or three paintings last week and then today. And I just fold it over and it's, it gets really soft. It's cheap paper towel too. It's not super expensive. Um, I know some people, they like to use the uh, real expensive paper towels. I will probably be, you know, using some t-shirts and things like that at some point. But, you know, we do what we do. Anyway, if you're interested in the book of designs, this is available as a downloadable book on Teespring. The link is over in the chat and down below in the more information. It's also available as a um, printed, printed book that you can... Um, uh, my recommendation is, since it's such an inexpensive book, go ahead, cut the pages out. <laughs> and use them to put onto your light box. I, you can't, you know, I've even seen people who have, and I have updated the uh, cover design so that the words aren't all the way on the spine here. They're moved in. I've seen people where they completely deconstruct the book and punch holes and throw it into a binder. You know? So just... Just saying, those those are all things that you can do. But yeah, t cut the pages out. Uh, if you color them with colored pencils or markers, uh, you can color right on that paper. If you want to use watercolor, I would suggest if you get this kind of a book to um, cut the pages out and use a light box or a window and transfer onto watercolor paper. Which is one of the cool things about this is that you can print right on your watercolor paper. So the downloadable book makes it so you can print on everything. Yeah, yeah, Angie, having the downloadable book so you can print on whatever paper. You can print on, um, you can print on mixed media paper. You can print on watercolor paper, cardstock paper, your text weight paper. Uh, anything that your ink will stick to, you can print on. You can even print on fabric sheets that they have set up for inkjet printers. And then you can take fabric paints and color it. <laughs> All right, there we go. You use your pants. Yeah, a lot of people, um, a lot of people will have like a, a sleeve that they'll, they'll put on, they'll just wipe off on their sleeve. <laughs> I know it's kind of weird, but it works. I think that's why I tend, and I also told you guys, I clutch, I, I kind of like grip stuff. So having the paper towel, it's my, it's my little safety, my little safety gripper. <laughs> I hold on to it. I'm not going to do any color on the actual cup. So I think I'm going to go and just wipe that right around the edge. If there's a little shadow of a color on the rim, that's okay. But out here on the rim, this is a white cup, and I'm going to leave that white. But I am going to put a little bit of reflected color up, up here on the handle, as where that shadow is. It just helps, look at that, that little bit of right here at the edge and going down. 
And this is actually kind of a brownish tone, isn't it? Or yellowish tone. It's kind of reflecting the light, I think, from the sunflowers. So I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre type color. That's that kind of yellowy brown. A little bit of that. And a little touch of the kind of green tone that's right here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that out here on the on the end of the handle and I'm not going to blend that down here I'm just putting a couple little dabs doesn't have to be a lot I'm going to take a little bit more of this brown tone that I've got and put that in for my shadow right here boom we have a handle doesn't take much does it couple little dabs of paint and now that and I took that really dark right down at the base of that right down at the bottom of that handle come on focus there we go right down here a little bit of that extra dark brown it sends that that part of the handle way down deep don't have to do anything else with that we're good <laughs> oh yeah, I I can chat and and paint at the same time. I'm going to grab some of the that burnt sienna brown, just a touch of it, and some of this kind of orangey red. That's looking pretty good. Maybe the edge of it. Hey Darcy. Um, the edge of it, I'm going to take just a little bit of this more orangey color. I'm getting my, my tea, tea colors worked in here, aren't I? So that's my brightest color. I think I'm going to take that in right now. And now my cup is dry. Inside of my cup is dry. But as I start getting these colors on, and I'm just going to use that as my base color for the whole thing. And this is how I'm wetting my paper down. So base color. And I can take a little bit of water now and move that color around. I just want, I wanted a base color in and since it was going to go over the whole thing and get the whole thing wet, why not color it with color or wet it with color instead of wetting it with just plain water, right? So now we've got that first layer of color there. We're going to take this next layer of this sort of red brown color, leaving an edge. And looking at this, you'll go, ooh, that's looking all speckly. That is the texture of the fibers of the paper, the bamboo paper and cotton. And it will lay completely flat again when we get it, when we uh, dry it, sorry, when we dry it. So right now I'm kind of laying that in. I'm looking at this going, there is a tiny rim of a darker the darker color right around that tiny rim and that's the shadow of the top layer from the paint or from the uh, from the tea there's a shadow oh, let's see if we can see that right around right around the this edge in that cup there's a bit of a shadow and that's just from the top edge where the um, liquid comes in contact with the edge of the actual cup. Cool, huh? Now we're looking at that and this area right down in here is going to get much browner. So let's go ahead and make that reference a little smaller again. So down inside, ooh, 
I picked up I picked up a brown brown down inside it's gonna be much darker kind of like there's a little tea sediment in the bottom okay so right now we're kind of um, getting that darker shadow in the very bottom I am going to soften my edges around, but I'm letting this sort of stain the paper a little bit down inside. And that little bit darker color right around the outside edge. I've got a fuzzy hanging on the end of my brush. Pull that fuzzy off. Right around this edge right here. I'm gonna say there's a little bit of a darker and the inside of the cup there, coming up, just a bit. See, the this cup really isn't that thick. I think that it probably curves down. So I might take a gray, ever so slight gray, right up there at the top edge. But this right here is that reflection of the color on the inside of the cup and it gets darker as it comes right down to the that seam line that what I say is like a seam line or the that connection space you're always afraid of the edges yeah don't worry about it you can always clean them up <laughs> you can always clean up your edges I'm taking some more of that orange red and I'm taking some yellow into it, I think. I want to warm this tea up a little bit. I'm getting some more water into that. I don't really want it to be quite so... Ah, there. Look, we're getting more of that orangey color. I'm letting my colors all sort of blend together. Just working it, figuring it out as I go along. I mean. Let's, let's be real here, guys. We're figuring these things out as we go. And when the color sort of does something cool, go with it. I'm taking a, a bit more of a bright yellow. I'm going to put it in. I'm, I'm going to dab with my... With my paper towel. Oh, that's another paper towel, different one. I'm going to kind of curve it. See how it's like sort of like a crescent shape right here? I'm going to see if I can kind of crescent shape. Ha! Look at that. Dabbing it out in that kind of crescent shape. I'm going to lighten that little bit right there. I like that. I want to get a little bit of the burnt sienna brown into my orangey tone here. And I'm going to put some more of that darker tone right in. This is super, super wet, guys. This is super wet. That deeper tone right down deep. A little bit more of the burnt, burnt sienna brown, and maybe, ooh, yep, tiny little bit of the burnt umber brown. Making some variations. Let your, let your eye guide you on where those colors need to go. See? And this is super super wet i think let's see i'm not sure if the close-up will show you how wet that is when i touch here see how wet that is this is this is super soggy and i know a lot of people are like wow <laughs> that that really is soggy isn't it it's okay i'm gonna take some of that way darker brown let it just flow up there a little bit 
This is making me really happy. I hope that you guys are having fun and that this is making you happy too. Click that like button. Show me how happy it's making you. If you just came in, I'm Stephanie. This is Deliberately Creative. And I am having fun playing with watercolor, doing these cozy paintings. We've got a really fun painting of a cat coming up. And wow, this is, this is, I'm sort of drilling in and, and getting a, getting drilled in, aren't I? Let's just dry that. Now let's see what that looks like as it dries. I have this dryer right here. I've got it off, off the camera. So we're just going to watch that and see what happens as it dries. Ooh, see, you can see how wet that is. So I'm just drying it off. Oh, see, we've got that last little bit of a puddle right there. This is a heat tool. Um, you could do this with a blow dryer. If you work someplace, if you're working someplace that has a very dry air, it will dry really fast anyway. So there we go. Let's zoom out. Oh, you can't zoom out on that one, Steph. Got to go to this one to zoom out. There we go. Come on, zoom out. So I've got a bit of a light halo right here. I want to darken that little bit up, I think. And then we will move on. And I'm going to glaze right over. Look at that, I'm glazing. I just took a layer of color. Oop. I need to be careful when I'm glazing that I'm not lifting up all of the color underneath. Taking a little line of that color along the back. Along this edge right here. There we go. So, Seisman, welcome, welcome. So exciting to see so many, so many new friends coming in, guys. I love new friends. If you like this video, make sure and click that like button. All the good things, you know. Do all the things, guys. I'm going to lighten this up right here, up on the cup. Everything else is dry already, so I'm just going to go like this and soften that edge. It felt a little hard to me, so I got it all wet. I'm going to soften this little lower edge here. I have some Yupo paper. I have not done any watercolor on Yupo. Watercolor on Yupo, um, that, that's like magic. That's like magic. I've seen alcohol ink on Yupo, and that, that feels a little bit more accessible to me. All right. I think that's, I think that's good. We're going to dry that a little bit. Bye, Gina. Take care. Have fun with all of your business meetings and all those things that you're doing. All right, so we are going to move on to the flowers. And now looking at these flowers, you see that I simplified and I only put two flowers. And I know you're supposed to work things in threes, but you know what? I didn't. <laughs> and I think that's okay. For this, it works. Yupo is a... Uh, plastic that is made out into very thin sheets that can be used for a painting surface. So you can, it has a slight tooth to it. You can color on it with um, alcohol pens, alcohol paints, watercolor, acrylic. 
Things take a long time to dry, and because it's plastic, if you work with water-based media, it will lift back up again when you get it wet. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's, there's that. The, um, this particular one here, if you look at that center, it's very, um, very light. I actually want to take that more into the orangey brown tones. So I'm going to take the Burnt Sienna Brown Legion Paper Company will, um, makes it in tablets of Yupo. Yeah, and you can paint on both sides. You can do two completely different kinds of painting on both sides of the paper. Um, the, the Yupo paper. I want to really get a lot of brown into that. So this is a ready brown color. I am making up the center of this, saying that it's a brighter version of a brown, but dark. I mean, bright dark? How's that? Bright dark. There we go. So we are going to just, we're really going to just drill right in on those flowers. So I'm going to zoom right in on them and try and stay centered up so that you can see. I'm going to take some of the burnt umber brown and just sort of drop that down in around the base where the where the petals are going to be. I'm going to try and keep these a little bit more loose and not not drill in quite so much on them. But you know, we don't see any of the center on the big flower. So that works to our benefit, right? I did not put any of the petals really coming down. There's the one petal right here going out. I think I'm going to soften up a little bit of that paint that got on the tips. And watch that. I See how I soften that up? And I can blot it off. Wipe your brush off if you pick up a lot of paint on your brush. Now this is where I might end up with a little bit of gouache, actually, to really get the tips of those to be a little bit more bright. I might add a little bit of gouache into my yellow. But right now I'm just softening up that brown paint that's on the flowers and blotting it off. Oh, look at that. Look at that. All right, that, that's making me happy. What do you do with vellum? Vellum is, um, you can, you, vellum, you can use ink. You can draw with ink on vellum. You can um, paint washes of ink. You can do gouache, opaque paint on vellum. You can do acrylic on vellum in thin layers. Uh, because vellum is flexible, you don't want to do something that's going to flake off. So you never work with really thick layers on vellum. But the... If you think about it, the back in the day when they were doing all of the illuminations on, um, you know, those fancy knotworks and images on like the B Book of Kells, that's on vellum. That's that was being worked on natural vellum, which is a um, animal product. But the vellum we have nowadays that we buy in the art store is a. Uh, is a paper product. Generally, the vellum that we get in the art store has different different layers of transparency to it, the thickness of it, just like any other paper. So what I would say is grab a piece of it and do some swatches of your artwork or of your art medias. Oh, I have an art media book, um, inventory book that I made that should be coming out any day now on Amazon. And so that we can uh, do the 
keep tracking, keep tracking, keeping track of all of our art materials. You did cards on vellum with a stylus. Yes, you can. Um, you can take a stencil and draw around with a stylus and em emboss. It's a reverse embossing technique. Hello, Nahida. Welcome. So, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of things you can do. I am going to go ahead and dry that center real quick. Actually, before I dry it, I'm going to take kind of a wadded up little, little chunky bit, wadded up, find a spot with some texture, and touch. And look at that. I just got some texture in the middle of that little bit of highlight. I'm going to dry it though so that I don't end up with so I don't end up with other colors uh, blending into it. I like that dark brown center. I'm going to take the bright yellow and let's see. Did I, did I lose my... <laughs> I just... I set things down and I lose them. So this is another piece of paper towel. This one's completely dry uh, that I had laying around. I'm going to take a touch of the gouache and my bright yellow. And I'm going to actually make kind of a, a yellow gouache, but without having to grab another tube of gouache out. So I've got this bright yellow color and I'm going to take a touch of the gouache into it so see we've got that pretty pretty color and now I'm going to go in with this big huge brush and lay in the tips of my petals Oops, sorry. Lay in the tips of my petals. And I'm not worried about I'm overlapping right now. I'm overlapping my colors or my petals. That's okay. Totally okay to do that. Nice thing about the gouache is that it's going to help this yellow just be a little bit more opaque, a little bit brighter. See, I'm going to go ahead. Ah, I'm going to go ahead and just paint them, paint the whole thing. Look at that. I'm just taking some of that, that little bit of white gouache into my white or into my yellow. It's making a lovely semi opaque. It's not totally opaque. It's not completely blanking out those lines that I have there. Is it? I can still see my lines. Oh, if you have the digital download of the Cozy Creative um, Designs book, when you are printing, if you when you print on watercolor paper, make sure and go in and change your settings to draft or eco or ink saving, whatever the whatever your printer calls it because it will put less ink on the paper and you won't have as much of a chance of it, uh, what do I want to say, bleeding into your paint. Because some, some of the inks that are on the home printers are very water-based and will bleed into your, into your painting. So going in and... Ooh, I like that one that's in the back there that looks like it's in shadow. This one right here, I'm actually leaving some white spaces. That's cool. There we go. Hello, Gracie. Thank you. And uh, Sudha, welcome. Thank you. My name is Stephanie, and this is Deliberately Creative. I'm going to... I'm going to actually, on this part of this flower, I'm going to lift up 
a little bit of that paint that I put on those petals and brighten up this space right here by just lifting out some of that color. See how easy that was? Yeah. Uh, came in your art kit from school years ago and you just opened it. Oh, Darcy, that is awesome. Isn't it fun to go and find find supplies, shop our, shop our own closets for art supplies sometimes? I'm softening up and going to take out just a little bit more of that paint. See, that already is starting to help us build this into a, you know, into a more realistic, but not real, <laughs> not really realistic, but kind of. Uh, I'm going to take some of this orangey tone that we had down here and mix it with that yellow that I had right there. Let's see. Ooh. That's going to give me my nice color for doing some details. A little bit of texture. Let's zoom in on that. Yeah, I keep zooming in and zooming out, guys, because I'm looking at it on a screen and I'm seeing seeing things that I want to enhance and seeing things that I want to minimize. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay, uh, stay a little bit looser back here on the, on the pedals. We'll see how that happens, how that goes, because you know, I am definitely definitely one of those people that I can sit there and fiddle around with things for a long time and you might want to go off and do something else and that's okay so if you need to go do something else come on back and visit I might still be here or come on back and finish watching see how it ended up I don't expect anybody else to stay for this long, really, except for me and those diehards that want to watch the whole thing from start to finish. That is looking so pretty. That really is looking pretty. So remember that the like button is there to let me know. If you are enjoying this and if you want more, do you guys want more flowers, more watercolor flowers, more drawing? I'm, I'm definitely going to be doing more drawing and doodling on the channel. I, I am finding that that is really making me so happy and being able to have these drawings like this and then go and share, uh, the painting of them afterwards. I think is so much fun. And when we do it like this and we have some drawing videos and then we have the, have the book that's already done with all of the artwork, I think that helps everybody. I'm going to zoom out. I know I'm zooming in and zooming out, but see how we've got that flower is pretty much done. I'm not, not going to do too much more. That's like the little flower at the bottom of that the set of flowers closest to the cup I just did it up a little higher because it was my drawing I could make it into whatever I wanted it right there we go we're gonna finish up on this other sunflower right up here at the top I'm picking up some of that orangey color with a little bit of gouache to start off with so it's a little bit lighter brown, orange gold color. And I'm going to put it in on the inside on some of these petals. Then what that does is it gives you the illusion 
that they're on the back side of the flower. Then when we go in and we take a little bit more of that gouache and some of that yellowy orangey color, we can put more of it out on the tips. What can I say? You know, I, I love being able to play with art like this. I, yeah, I am chatty and they're pretty much, even when I'm being quiet and working in my studio by myself, I'm not talking out loud, but I do have an internal monologue going on. I don't know. Do you, do you have a, an internal monologue monologue? gouache and yellow ochre um actually this was a this was that orange that i had mixed up for the cup which was it was this kind of bright orange right here which is the uh c03 can't see that number five c05 and then it was the um, one, two, three. So it's C zero or C 10. See these palettes, they have weird, weird names. So I would say that this was kind of a pyrrole orange almost and a, the, um, more of a scarlet type red orange, almost a cad red orange. And some of this, I would say kind of cad yellow or lemon yellow color that were mixed together with a little bit of burnt sienna. I think that was all the colors I used in that area. And that was right here. So I just picked it up and moved it to my yellow. You moved it up here where I had a little bit of that lemon yellow and that brownie orange color with a bit of gouache. Wow. That was a long, a, a long, uh, explanation, wasn't it? Sorry about that. I'm going to grab just a little bit of white. I'm going to really brighten up the very tip of a couple of these on that back side, just because the light is hitting it. At least in my mind, light is hitting more there. And I did point up my tips on my, my sunflowers here a little bit. And Darcy, thank you, goddess of doodling. I don't actually claim to be that, but I do have fun doodling and I do have fun sharing doodling with others. I like to, like I said, I, I have a running monologue going. So I just brightened those up. I'm going to put a little bit of that white right here. I'm going to take some of the brown uh, brown, orangey, yellow. It's like orange pico tea. Yes. Orange pico tea. Isn't that, um, isn't constant comet? Constant comet and orange pico. I remember my parents having that. I like... I like a good English breakfast tea. I am a, um, give me the caffeine. <laughs> so PG Tibbs, English breakfast type tea. Um, let's see the, um, oh, which company it was a gold and there was a gold and a red. I'm trying to remember the they're Irish teas. Um, Carney? Carney and Sons? I think that's what it was. Uh, very good. So I am going to take more of that orangey color. If it's down here, it's on my tape. Look at that. I can still pick up that paint that was on the tape. And use it.
to lightly get some shadows in. Leaving my highlights though. See, when I put a shadow in, it makes that highlight even brighter. Yeah, this would be a lovely cover for a gardening journal. I think that's probably going to go on my list. See, when I do the insides for my books, I know a lot of people that are doing the... Um, the low content or no content type books on, on Kindle, on Kindle publishing on Amazon are doing books and they're just, you know, buying the insides from other people and throwing them into whatever covers they want to use. I, I like to put my own art and I like to have my own hand. Ooh, that's pretty. See, I like to have my own hand on the inside also. So I, I tend to make my, make the insides of my books also. So it takes me a little bit more time, but I think that it makes it more special. Look at that. I'm just taking that bright orange that, oh, that's. That's looking so pretty. Building the, building the intensity of the color up a little bit here. Pushing that contrast. By having that bit of gouache on there, it's actually making this orange stand out better. Oh, so pretty. I've got a uh, scrub jay outside my window right now. Making a ruckus. The neighbors feed the birds, so I don't have to, but I get all the enjoyment. It's so much fun. <laughs> Just want to make that a little bit oh, there. Ooh, pretty. See, I'm just, I'm, I'm just having fun and I hope you are too. Because really, that's what, what painting is about, learning to be mindful, learning to, to just be there in the moment. I'm taking a little bit of that orange and kind of warming up the, the wall or the table right here. It's not the wall, it's the table. Just warming up the table a little bit right around the, the top edge of that. And I'm looking right there needs to be dark. Red rose. Yeah, red rose tea. That's that's another one. Um, there's so many. There's so many good teas. For a while, I was being a real tea snob, and I would only drink um, tea that was loose tea in a, um, and do it in the tea ball and, you know, all of that. I got over that. Tea bags are so convenient. See, look, just giving it a little bit of detail, just darkening up that. I want to darken up right there around that petal. By darkening up the area around it, it makes that petal stand out. I want to darken up right down in there. I'm just taking some burnt umber since I'm on that table right there and just darkening up down deep. Giving it a little more contrast. Just down deep. Snow Geisha Tea. So is that a white tea? You just came back, Brittany? Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying that. I'm so glad that you came back and you checked out what we were doing. Ooh, look at that. I'm going to take a little bit of that brown. 
on those petals that are in the back. See, now my brush is less and less wet. My color is going on a little bit more concentrated. Needs to be dark so you can see the light. There we go. All right. I could sit here and fiddle and play with this all day long. But you know what? We've already been here two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> I think it's time to pull the tape off. What do you think? I. So if I was going to work on this for like another half an hour or something, I would be going in and probably darkening up this bit right in here a little bit more maybe a little bit darker oh I'm not going to I'm not going to do this for 20 minutes but I am going to take a little bit of burnt umber just see burnt umber on my brush I'm going to go in right under the edge of that plate right there just a little bit darker I'm going to let it go up onto the leaf a little bit little bit darker right there I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to make that considerably darker with some of the Prussian blue and the burnt umber and really get my hand in the gouache ah! It is a white tea with some herbs in it. Ooh, that sounds lovely, Tatiana. Taking some of that darker color. I just really want to pump up that edge of darkness right down in there. Right back here. Just a bit. I'm, I know this is fiddly stuff. This is like not absolutely necessary, but it's one of those things that I would look at, look at this later and go, why didn't I take care of that? Right there. A little bit darker right along the edge of the envelope. Back here by the leaf. And right in there. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good. I'm really, really, really... Yeah, I needed to get that leaf under the edge of the plate. That, I needed that. And maybe... Tiny touch of gouache. Ah, uh, see, that's all it needed. That's all that needed right there. I think I'm going to take a tiny touch of gouache. Soften up that little orange bit that showed up on that top edge of the cup. You don't really see any shine on this tea in the cup. It's the little touches. It is. It's the tiny little things. There. See? That's all it needed. That's all that needed was that one little edge. Oh my gosh, guys, we're at 95 likes. Five more people hit that like button. I would love to see this get to 100 likes by the time we finish. I am pulling the tape off now. So, here we go. Now, we already pulled off this one side. We're going to pull off the rest of the tape and reveal that pretty edge. 
all the way around except where I worked that off the edge look at this guys let's go ahead and turn off the reference now and zoom over and zoom in there we go we have this beautiful set of sunflowers a cozy scene with your leaves with the flowers with your letters i was trying to say a cozy scene with your letters and tea and i went to leaves for some reason a cozy scene with your letters and tea and sunflowers that sort of end of summer yeah I think this is beautiful. I hope that you enjoyed this, that you will come back tomorrow for the, I know, I know that Tatiana's waiting for this one, for the cat. Isn't that going to be fun? If you want to paint along with me, you can download from Teespring the 30 Cozy and Creative Hand Drawn designs to print and color. The link will be up in the iCard. It is over in the chat and it is down below in the more information. If you're interested in any of the materials that I use, that's all listed down below in the more information. Also, hey, we made it to 100 likes. Woo! -hoo! Oh, and I do need to sign it. I think I'm going to sign right here. Just like that. So thank you guys. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you.